Welcome back to Sleep Better TV. I'm Scott Drake and we continue our discussion with Dr. Larry Pribble with the Center for TMJ and Sleep Apnea in Independence, Missouri. And we're continuing our discussion on sleep breathing disorders. In, in this particular segment, we're discussing pediatric sleep problems and early orthodontics. Uh, Dr. Pribble, welcome back. Is there anything a dentist can do for a child who snores or has sleep apnea? Yes, uh, a dentist can, uh, number one, do a thorough evaluation. And uh, one of our best first obligations would be to make a good referral, if necessary, to, uh, to an ENT if we see uh, large tonsils and large adenoids. Uh, secondly, uh, a dentist can make an oral appliance for a child to help reduce the, the bruxism or grinding issues. And thirdly, we uh, evaluate the airway uh, by way of a pharyngometer and a rhinometer, which shows airway patency and how open airways are for these kids. Uh, Dr. Pribble, will these kids who, who have these issues uh, have a chance to grow out of them? Uh, the children can possibly grow out of uh, their situation if their adenoids or tonsils shrink, that can help greatly. But if they have other anatomical issues, as in a narrow palate, a small mouth, a retronathic or retruded jaw, those things, you don't grow out of that and you may need some orthodontic help to accomplish, uh, to accomplish better alignment of their jaws and a more open airway. Dr. Pribble, can you talk about why it's so important to treat early? The earlier the better in regard to uh, treating children orthodontically. Number one, their, uh, their growth pattern. By the time someone is six years old, they are about 80% done growing facially. And by the time they're 11 years old, they've reached the 90% level to where they won't experience a lot more growth at that point in time. You can move teeth through uh, arches of kids of any age, but to affect a better airway and to affect a more stable orthodontic result, you need to treat early. And finally, doctor, do you think that there is a genetic component to sleep apnea? Absolutely. I think genetics plays a role in this and in regard to the facial structures that uh, children have in regard to uh, a retronathic or a small mandible in regard to uh, uh, just the, the, the anatomy in our neck, which plays a huge role in, in things. And when you look at um, sleep apnea, uh, there is just uh, about an inch and a half of airway space that the collapse happens in. And so it's not a big, not a big space uh, available, but we need to uh, monitor that and to do what we can to help increase that in size as uh, while well, a child is still growing. All right, doctor, thank you so much. Thank you very much. My guest has been Dr. Larry Pribble with the Center for TMJ and Sleep Apnea in Independence, Missouri. I'm Scott Drake and you're watching Sleep Better TV.